Hi, I'm Jason Bellamy, coming to you live from CSM 2018, where I'm joined by more than 17,000 of my friends, and one of them is Amy Smith. Amy Smith is the Chief Delegate of the PTA Caucus. And Amy, I want to talk to you today about sort of engagement with PTAs, uh, what the past year has been like in, in your role trying to unite PTAs, bring them together, get them involved in the association. Um, before we do that, though, I, I just want, let's, let's address the elephant in the room. So most recently, APTA had a historic win related to the therapy cap. But what got tied into that was a payment differential pending in 2022 for PTAs, which is obviously a disappointing element of that, that win. Um, we're going to go and we're going to talk about that in this. But before we get to that, that's the most recent news. But it comes after a year of what's really been very positive for the PTAs. Give me a sense of what your view, your perspective on PTAs within APTA, within the profession over the past year overall. OK, great. Thanks, Jason. It is such a positive momentum with PTAs within the association currently. We saw a 5% growth in PTA membership alone last year. Also, the full vote um, at the component level has, has given PTAs such a positive perception and value to PTA membership within the organization. The TRICARE win was huge, yeah. um, bringing PTAs into payment for TRICARE. So um, it's amazing to see all of the, the positive momentum and the engagement, PTAs across the nation working together um, to build support and to advocate for our patients. Yeah, so the, the TRICARE one is a great example. That's, that's where we, we get everything that's on our wish list in advocacy, right? So for people who aren't familiar with that, explain what happened that went on TRICARE. So for many years, um, TRICARE did not recognize PTAs or OTAs, um, and they were unable to provide treatment uh, for patients who had TRICARE. So Congress um, added language that would recognize PTAs and CODAs um, in the, as treatment providers, and the president signed that law, and so now we can treat TRICARE patients. Yeah, so that's huge, and, and then again, most recently there's been the therapy cap, and, and so let's explain kind of how that broke down first. So. We go back to last fall, there's a bipartisan agreement on the table that's gonna take away the hard cap on the, ther on the therapy cap uh, forever, permanently. Um, but Congress doesn't act. As a result of Congress not acting, at the beginning of 2018, that hard cap goes into place. So there's no exceptions process, there's no workaround. Patients under Medicare at that point actually have a hard cap on the amount of physical therapy they can, they can receive. And so we weren't just looking for a short-term solution, but a long-term solution. Congress comes along with this, this multi-year, uh, hugely expensive uh, budget plan that includes within that a fix to the hard cap on physical therapy, but sort of out of nowhere, relatively speaking, this, this pending payment differential in 2022 for PTAs. Uh, APTA did not support that. APTA immediately called congressional offices and tried to say, make this stop. Um, but they were not basically hearing amendments on this. It was part of a much larger package that included lots of other spending cuts uh, within the government that were far beyond physical therapy or health care. Um, but still disappointing news, even though it's a huge win for our patients to have that approved access. Um, what's your reaction to all that? What was it like to go through that? And, and how should PTAs feel? I mean, how should they feel coming out of this? So I'll first say that the cap directly affects me and my line of work. We treat the geriatric population. And to realize that Mr. Smith, who had a stroke, was over the cap by the end of January because he needed physical therapy and speech, that's significant. And that's the first and foremost. We do what we do because of the patients that we treat every day. And so being an advocate for the services that they need, that the Medicare that they've paid into for all of their life, and they deserve this benefit. So the cap being repealed uh, is huge. As you said, we've been fighting this for 20, 21 years. So that's a huge victory, and I don't wanna let that slip past without making that um, very clear. But at the same time, when you realize that PTA services and OTA services are going to be cut by 85%. Um, that's concerning. Paid at 85%, cut at 15%. Thank you. Right. Yep. Thank you. And it was slipped. It, they just slipped it in. Um, so the discussions all throughout last year did not include that 85% um, differential. 
Um, so on Monday night of February 2nd, I believe it was. Days before they actually passed it, right? Exactly. Um, APTA found out about it. And of course, we don't support the language. Um, and throughout that week, I was in close um, personal communication with APTA president, APTA CEO, Justin Moore, and Justin Elliott regarding strategies, um, ways that they were working with within the House and the Senate to potentially provide amendments. Um, but in the end, we were successful in repealing the cap, but not the 85% differential. With that being said, we have our work cut out for us the next four years. So because of the way the language is written, it's not defined because it talks about um, the PTA being involved in the treatment and that's not defined. So we have time to be involved and engaged in the rulemaking process to either get that defined softer or to hopefully get it totally taken out. So now's the time. Now's the time to be a member of APTA because APTA is the person, the people, we are APTA, but we need to be at the table. We need to be discussing um, how we're going to make these changes um, because it hasn't gone into effect yet. We have four years to make changes and to make it more positive. So now is the time. I urge everyone out there to be a member of APTA. Um, as well as OTs and OTAs need to be members of AOTA because we're partnering with AOTA as we collaborate and strategize um, to work towards protecting physical therapy services and specifically PTAs in that treatment. You know, you mentioned being at the table and, and one of the things that maybe uh, the people who are longtime advocates for the therapy cap, right, who have been involved every year of that 20 plus year fight to get this hard cap removed, they understand this, but a lot of people who weren't involved don't. The, the fight for the therapy cap, 17 times Congress took action over those 20 years. None of those times did they take action on their own. Every single one of those times, there was a significant amount of energy and resources used in that time at the table to get to that short-term fix, and then eventually, obviously, to our permanent fix. And so the nice thing also, too, about the hard cap being on is it doesn't have to be part of the conversation anymore, that element of it. So we can talk about other things. We can talk about the PTA differential. We can talk about other things that impacted home health and other areas, and just other issues that are important to APTA legislatively. Um, you know, you mentioned at the start of this that there's just been this really positive momentum. You've talked in meetings earlier this week already about how important it is for you to continue to have PTAs not only uh, feel involved with the association, but to really truly get engaged, to not just be members, but to engage. Kind of what's your parting advice for that? I mean, um, if it's not just being at the table in Congress, it's being in the room and participating within APTA, which is a broad, you know, APTA is a lot of people doing a lot of different things. What's your parting advice for PTAs? So being involved in APTA, there's so much that you gain from that involvement. Um, leadership, um, knowledge, but you know, the biggest thing over the past six years is, is the collaboration that I have got, you know, just my personal experience. Um, being able to collaborate with the APTA Board of Directors, being able to collaborate with PTs and PTAs across the nation, as well as other associations, um, to promote our profession um, and to advocate for our patients. You know, at the end of the day, it is about Mr. Smith and Ms. Jones and those patients that we treat every day. Um, and so being involved in APTA allows us to advocate for them better. You know, the other part about being a member and being engaged and involved is you have a voice. And if you're not a member, you don't have a voice. And, and your, voice is not, your voice is not heard. And so over the past six years and, and longer, I've been involved nationally um, since 2001, actually. So it's been a few years. But there have been times when you don't always see eye to eye with all of your, your cohorts. But having those discussions you may change the way you view something and you also may change the way they view something and so it's just been such a great experience to um, work with other individuals across the nation um, we also do a lot of service uh, from shoes for kids that we just talked about early yep. earlier to um, all different kinds of ways but 
One thing that I'll ask you to do is to go to the PTA Caucus Facebook page, like that page, follow that page. Membership matters, and we want all PTs and PTAs to be involved and engaged. But just imagine what we could do with 100% membership. If all PTs and PTAs were members of our organization, what an impact we could make on the Hill. Yeah, and the benefit of, of the potential for PTA membership to grow is that right now, it really is in a position that if somebody's listening to this and wants to join tomorrow and make an impact the next day, that's realistic. You know, if they reach out to you, the PTA caucus, you've got places to point them, things for them yes. to do. Um, so please do that, get involved. Uh, thanks for listening to this. Please share this message. Um, we're obviously trying to improve the, the, the communication and the engagement uh, and the, that better together spirit that you talked about. Um, within the association and, and PTAs are a huge part of that. They're a huge part of the PT, P, uh, PTA treatment team and they're also a huge part of the association. So for Amy Smith, I'm Jason Bellamy. We'll be doing broadcasts like this from APTA's Facebook page uh, today and tomorrow. Please be sure to share those, like them, check them out, let other people know about them, and thanks for watching.